so that I can hopefully stay on track and not ramble, I have prepared an opening statement for tonight. I apologize in advance for this taking longer than normal, but for many reasons, I think this is the right approach. And even though I've always answered any question you guys have asked, once I'm finished with this statement, I'm not going to answer any questions going forward on this topic. Because my statement includes all that I'm comfortable sharing. When you are completely absorbed in a worthy cause, you give it all of your time, energy, and emotion. The sacrifice required prevents you from being aware of anything other than the cause you are devoted to. From Valentine's Day through Sunday afternoon, everyone in our program and the families they represent gave all they had. And in a way that I have never witnessed personally or professionally, gave their absolute best on a daily basis. And in truth, as the odds continued to grow against us, found ways to get better and embrace the task at hand that particular day. During that time, we won five of our last six to finish the regular season and won three of four last week while advancing to the championship game of the conference tournament. That ending propelled us to a total of 12 SEC wins for the season. We found out Sunday afternoon that those numbers weren't good enough to be invited as an at-large team. We were and are completely devastated and heartbroken. Sad is the wrong word because it doesn't completely express the totality of our emotions. Since our return late Sunday night, I've spent all of my waking hours trying to better understand the data on how those 12 SEC competition only wins weren't enough. While knowing that the four teams in our league that won more than that were all a four seed or higher. As I began to do research, the first thing I wanted to learn was how members were selected to the committee and how the selection of those members even worked. In other words, what committee selected the committee? I wanted to research who was on the committee for this year's tournament, their career paths, and how when they were appointed to their position on the committee, so that once they were appointed, what data is it that they study? When, where, and how often do they meet? And when they meet, what are the topics of discussion? And during it all, what metrics do they look at? And what is most important? I wanted to make sure that I studied it all with the lens they do so that I could better understand how what we did this season wasn't enough. I wanted this understanding so I could have an explanation for our players, their parents, and coaches, and be accountable in my relationship with each of them. My phone and TV have been off since we landed late Sunday night, so I'm oblivious to whatever has been said. But similar to how the committee is supposedly sequestered, I wanted to make sure that my research was thorough and I didn't have the opinion of others diluting the information I was gathering. So that this doesn't turn into a math class, I have brought copies of the summary of my research, if for some reason any of you would want one. You guys are welcome to this. Without reviewing all of the numbers again, I have made copies so that you guys can see what I studied. After studying all of this nonstop the last two days and looking at it from every vantage point, it defies logic that we are not in the NCAA tournament. Despite repeated pleas, I have only been given generalities by those above me 
not data specific evidence on why we weren't invited. Without logical reasoning behind the decision, while knowing I still must explain this to our guys and their families, it has caused me to lose all respect and faith in the system and those that are in it. What has transpired is wrong. I am so sad for all of the young men in our program, especially those who decided to stay at Texas A&M with their COVID year of eligibility. The process is obviously flawed, and it is apparent that there is way more included that is unseen and unknown in the selection of the 36 at-large teams than what the public is made aware of. Until there is complete transparency and accountability, the system will stay broken, and this will continue to happen. Like many other things I have seen with the NCAA in my career, especially during my tenure here, allowing a personal bias to impact the process should not be allowed. Our players and staff earned a right to play in the greatest tournament in the world. And it disgusts me in a way that I can't articulate that the system and the adults in it prohibited that from happening because several in our program will never have that opportunity again. Despite how disenchanted I have become with all of this, I will always stand up for our players and the families they represent. Regardless of the opinion of anyone, that is the least that I can do. Our focus is now on what we can control, and I will answer any questions about tonight's game. like there was um, any emotional heaviness or even just um, fatigue in the legs to start out that first half? We left uh, last Tuesday. We worked here on Tuesday and then left. We didn't get to Tampa, obviously, with East Coast time until Tuesday evening. So in essence, seven days later and all that has transpired, it's been a lot. And um, I've never coached in any capacity four games in four days, particularly with what we thought was at stake. And then, you know, we stayed around waiting to determine what was going to transpire. So we didn't get home until midnight, Sunday night. And then we were off yesterday. And uh, I told the team, uh, they all came, everybody on Team Bus One came in my office when we got back to campus. And I told them, this is my decision. I didn't ask an assistant. I, I don't think we need to do anything tomorrow. And so I, I just, that would be yesterday. I just didn't think, Travis, that they could absorb anything else, physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, the training room was open for six hours. Um, and then we had a brief shoot around today with the coaches, not me, um, walking through some of what we anticipated the opponent would do. And then I talked to them. And um, not being a prophet, but being uh, their cheerleader, 
It's a lot. And uh, Alcorn went 14-4, and four, and I think they played nine guarantee games. So they're accustomed to playing on the road against a Power 5 team. I did not think that. We played great in the first half. I thought they were really good on the glass. I thought we were just there. And um, we were better in the second half. But we were for sure not at any point hitting on all cylinders. We'll take off tomorrow, maybe tomorrow at some point. I think we find out when we play again and then once we find that out, then we'll try to make a decision in hopes that we can kind of get recalibrated because we won't be able to continue to play and play the way that we did tonight. How proud are you of them, of them the way they came together again in the second half and overcame all that to, to get the win? Yeah, Brent, I, I, it's just been... Uh, I'm so proud. So proud. And so disappointed. And uh, like my wife has taught me, you can have two emotions at the same time. And you have to be able to deal with both. <laughs> And, you know, we go about halftime a little different than probably what you're supposed to. And uh, I aborted the normal halftime calisthenics that we normally do. And um, I told them the truth again. And I was just as much a part of the problem or more than any of our guys were. And so I apologized to them in a sincere way. I told him I would do better and that we needed to do better. And we almost, well, we for sure doubled our output and almost scored 50 in the second half. So we were a lot better, but very proud. Got time for a couple more. Coach, um, with what you guys did in the SEC tournament run and now that you're still playing postseason ball, just what does this do um, for the younger guys and for this program, just experience-wise and moving forward? Yeah, I think all of it is really healthy. Uh, for the program, I think it's healthy for the future of our program. Um, I think for them to understand all that comes with postseason play, you know, for our group, uh, Tampa was the first postseason this group had been together in. And uh, for anybody in the program, it's the only time we played more than one postseason game. And we were able to play four in four days, and so now we've played five, and I guess it would be six days. So all of that is is good, for sure. Anything else for Coach? Thanks, Coach. Thank you.